earlier, I had the chance to speak with Thomas Lee, managing partner and the head of research at Fundstrat Global Advisors. We touched on the Fed as well as El Salvador and if the recent pullback in Bitcoin could amount to another crypto winter. Have a listen. I think today crypto has come a long way in terms of the quality of participants, the, the expansion of participation. I think the institutional sort of ownership is growing, but it's still quite small. Um, and I think the, the quality of the companies and, and just the people involved, I mean, it's grown a lot. So I think in some ways, uh, I do think a crypto winner is happening, but I would still think that 2020 still looks more like 2017, meaning we're still in the middle of a, I think, a pretty big up move in, in crypto. Mm -hmm. Are you still predicting 100,000 Bitcoin by the end of the year or where, where is it? Or 100 million, because I'm talking uh, to Thomas Lee, so you know, you, you never know. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think Bitcoin can, you know, it's, it's roughly 45,000 today. I think it, it could easily get to 100,000 before year end, but I think that's in the context of what we see as a bigger move in financial markets. So I think equities are broadly going to rally into the end of the year, and that takes up crypto. And, you know, longer term, again, it's a network value asset. So I think as adoption grows, I think, you know, Bitcoin can get to, you know, the half a million, a million in a few years as well. What do you see happening with the Fed? And COVID can be the, you know, uh, the surprise. We, we don't know what's going to happen with COVID. But the, the Fed has been talking about tapering, and we have central banks around the world talking about it, but uh, slowly moving towards it perhaps. But how do you th think that will impact markets? Yeah, I, you know, I think the easiest way we think about what the Fed's going to want to do is, you know, one, we're only one year into an expansion. So it's really early for the Fed to, to try to normalize policy. And I know investors are kind of, you know, think it's appropriate because there's inflation risk. But COVID is still uncertain and it affects how companies are making decisions. It's affecting policymakers and it's certainly affecting what the Fed's doing. So you know, we're, on the, we're in the camp that the Fed's more dovish than the market realizes because the Fed's uncertain. And an and uncertain Fed is actually good for markets because a dovish Fed means financial assets can still go up. And so for companies that you're advising who are entering the crypto space, we're hearing a lot about funds and Algorand, Solana being developed. Uh, what are you advising them in terms of should they be still going into Bitcoin or exploring some altcoins? Uh, when we talk to institutions and, and they want to think about their exposure, they're still going to take an approach that has broad exposure. So owning Bitcoin and Ethereum make a lot of sense, but there's a lot of great projects out there, including Solana. And, you know, believe it or not, many are interested in also getting involved with in the very earlier stages of, of things that are either DeFi related or NFT. So I think there's broad interest. It's just, it's, it's, a, there's going to, you know, there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of opportunities. And, and I don't think they expect to have the same returns that they get in equities, which means they might have more projects fail, but the potential return is much greater. And when you hear of countries like El Salvador making Bitcoin legal tender, we have Ukraine talking about making Bitcoin legal tender. What are your thoughts uh, when you see that emerging? Uh, it's, it's important to watch, but it's fraught with a lot of problems because, um, you know, some of these nations have a dollarization issue, you know, or they're highly in debt or their, their regime isn't considered stable. Um, so it raises the risk of either money laundering um, or being home to, you know, people who are trying to escape FinCEN and regulation. So I think it's got a mixed effect, but over time, if it can actually bring some of these nations and maybe the citizens out of poverty or democratize finance, it's actually a good thing. So I think it's just worth watching. Okay. We also have the SEC uh, Chair Gary Gensler appearing before the Senate uh, on Tuesday. Uh, what are you anticipating coming out of the regulators in the United States as they start investigating DeFi, even Coinbase uh, in their crosshairs? Reg, you know, it's it's very difficult to predict what regulators will do. You know, they tend to take, they tend to watch, take a lot of notes, 
they don't have to be in a rush. And then when they make a decision, it's going to be decisive. So I think one of the best things that the industry should do is try not to antagonize regulators. But it's it's very uncertain. And Gary Gensler is, you know, is, is very educated on crypto. I mean, you know, so it's not as if he doesn't understand the space. Right. Everyone thought, well, he taught courses on blockchain cryptocurrencies at MIT. Everyone thought that he would be crypto friendly. And so, uh, but with these uh, investigations, everyone is pretty uncertain. Um, so finally, when you're looking forward, uh, to the United States. Uh, there's been questions about whether or not Bitcoin could become the global reserve currency of the world. Any thoughts on that? Um, I would say Bitcoin adoption, I think, is somewhat unstoppable now um, because it is so widely held and it's, um, it's really proven its usefulness. But to topple the dollar is a tall order. Um, so that's part of the uncertainty. I, 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 I am still in the camp that I think the dollar is going to be sort of the dominant currency, but Bitcoin may be the dominant reserve asset. <laughs> so are you advising that corporations stock up their reserves in Bitcoin? Uh, well, you know, a lot of companies don't store gold, so they probably won't store Bitcoin. But it will make a lot of sense for companies to really deal with digital assets. And I think Jeremy Lair in the panel today made a great point, which is, you know, when you look at stable coins like USDC, it's really much more useful for micropayments um, than dollars. Because, you know, in dollar, the, the smallest unit is a penny, but with, you know, with USDC, it can, it can be fractionalized. So there, it's still, it, it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. But I, I think the dollar stays around, but I think, of course, Bitcoin grows in its usefulness. In terms of stable coins and cryptocurrencies, when you have negative rate environments, does that pose a, a more attractive place to put your assets and your money? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, with when, when it comes to negative rates, I think the best way to look at it is the level of interest rates less inflation, so a negative real rate. and. For the last 120 years, the U.S. was in a negative real rate environment for 26% of the time. So we could be in for 10 years where real interest rates are negative. That's great for hard assets or digital assets. So I think this is a great environment for Bitcoin and digital.